So now I was talking about iconic characters. I think it needs to be noted that there's more to life than just the Joker. Sure, maybe he's maybe the best villain in history, but in movie, film, history. Just plays and books and music. But there's other actors. Actors that should be noted, like Alan Rickman. Or not Alan Rickman, but, S but Snape. Like Snape, Severus Snape is one of the characters that's a two bit asshole, but he has this whole secret life that only certain people know about. Like, yeah, maybe he never had sex. That's not important. What's important is he's such a tragic character. And there's just some stupid question about why did the snake, like, why did he let the snake kill him? It's like, well, honestly, what would you do? <laughs> You're, well, actually, I'm sorry. They said the reason the snake kills him is, and he lets the snake kill him is because Snape knows that once he dies, Voldemort will have possession of nothing. He can't possess that wand because it's Harry. I don't know if he knew that. He probably did, because Malfoy disarms Dumbledore, and Snape kills him, but Malfoy disarms him. What's interesting, though, is I don't think Dumbledore even knew that that was going to happen. He probably thought that Snape was just going to kill him and disarm him. Or not disarm him, but the fact that he disarmed him. See, the thing is, it's like reading a good detective novel, which is what J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series is. It's a very good detective series about a boy who has no detective experience except in school. It's about a school, about a haunted school, and how it almost is burned to the ground, basically. Anyway, so, so what's interesting is most archetypes have like old schools or whatever, but the thing is, what makes hers so different is, um, yeah, it's possible that Snape also knew, and just Dumbledore without, because they're like professional wizards. Harry's not a professional wizard. The fact that he's still alive is like chance. Like, you know in The Dark Knight, when Harvey Dent is like, it's not what I, it's not about what I want, it's about what's fair. He's so angry. Yet he's had that stupid fucking coin for so long. Anyway, the point is, um, I used to have a two-faced straw. No, the point is, um, that... Snape is incredible. Better than Dumbledore, I need to say. Because Dumbledore is a tragic hero too, but Snape is more of a tragic hero. And the fact that Snape would know that Malfoy disarming Dumbledore would mean that it's Malfoy that should be killed, not Snape, then it's like, it just shows how stupid Voldemort is and how hungry and drunk with power he is. Like, if anything in that series that J.K. Rowling got wrong, I don't know. But, yeah, I think it's important to look at Snape and just how Alan Rickman plays him. Like, you look at Filch and then you look at Snape. Like, Snape is a greasy, like, creep. But then you look at Filch and you're like, Ugh. at least it doesn't look like that. Yeah. Kind of tired and don't really know what I'm doing right now. But, um... I feel like there's more to this than I even know what I'm just saying. Yeah, so Snape is like a really good character. Like actors need to play the roles that change their careers. Like Alan Rickman playing Snape changed his career. It just did. But he didn't need to be Snape. It's like an act like did Heath Ledger need to be the Joker? Yeah. But did Alan Rickman need to be Snape? Yeah. Like, these actors needed to be those roles, but one of the most terrifying scenes, I think, in the films, not the books, there is a very terrifying scene where Voldemort's trying to attack Harry and Harry's, like, struggling in, in the, either the room or the bathroom? I don't know. The point is, that's terrifying. But J.K. Rowling does that all the time because it's all about madness mixed with sanity. And now that we know that the Joker is sane, 
what is Voldemort? What's Harry? Like, Harry is fighting this thing that's in his head, but that's, that's like schizophrenia. That's like having a mental breakdown. That's like having people talk to you. Voices. That's not good. You should never tell people that you're hearing voices. Anyway, Voldemort possesses Harry, and he's like, you lost, old man. And Dumbledore's like, Harry, it's not about what makes you the same, or what makes you different. That's what he said. He says, it's not what you, it's not, it's not, it's not the part of you that's the same. It's the part of you that's not the same. I have to say it better. I don't know why I just did. But anyway. And Harry, like, figures it out. Because he's fighting. You can see he's struggling. Like, he's struggling. Like, to anybody not knowing the wizarding world, Harry is having a seizure. Probably a killing seizure. Like, one that he's not going to come out of. But he's Harry Potter, so obviously he does. But it's like, wow. I know by this time they're going all crazy with the special effects. But, wow. Like, I don't know what else to say about that. It's just terrifying and he's like you don't know love or friendship and i feel sorry for you and then he really fights it because he got the, he's punching the mirrors it's just wow it's so good it's like the scene with bruce wayne and the city of mirrors or what's really cool though also is that scene is before he actually is really possessed he's like looking up and all his friends are there hermione jenny Luna, like, the Dumbledore's army is there, like, the real Dumbledore's army, not all the idiots that thought they were going to be part of the army, because they didn't ban them. Anyway, the point is that he's looking at all of them, and each one of them he has a different feeling for. Like, he looks at Ginny, and he's like, Ginny, my girlfriend. He looks at Hermione, he's like, Hermione, one of my best and loyal friends. And Ron, Ron, so courageous. If I die, it's going to be okay. Luna, Luna, you have better brains than Hermione in a way. See, what's also interesting is who Harry should end up with. And it's obviously Ginny, but like, there are other candidates. Not Cho Chang. Like Luna Lovegood. I think that would be a great one. The movies, it seems it's very clear that Neville would marry Luna, but according to J.K. Rowling, Neville would marry someone else. Which is good, honestly. Because, like, why would you marry all the iconic characters with the iconic characters? Like, that's so cliche. And J.K. Rowling knows about cliches. She was such a good English student. So, like, she wouldn't do that to her books. Like, remember, this is a woman that never expected to be published. She was reject rejected 96 times. I haven't even been rejected 96 times. The day I do, I'll probably break a hospital bed. Like, <laughs> the point is, this is dark. 